Hi again everyone, Chris Tisdell here. In this video I'm going to continue my series of presentations on partial differential equations. Now in previous videos we've been looking at the inhomogeneous wave equation together with some initial data. And in, in the two previous videos I showed that the solution to this problem here is this. Okay, now just uh, to recap, C here is uh, a constant, H is the non-homogeneous term, a user function of position x and time t, you have the initial um, displacement or, or initial position of say a string at time t equals zero given by this function phi, and you have the initial velocity given by this function psi at t equals zero. Okay, so U just, rep for example, if we're looking at vibrating strings, U just represents the uh, position at time, uh, position at x uh, at time t, and use the, the deflection, if you like, from the equilibrium position. Okay, so what do we have here? Well, I have discussed this in, in previous videos, but essentially, if I cover up that, this is D'Alembert's solution to the case when h equals zero. And if I cover up these terms, then this is the solution to this problem with phi and psi equal to zero. So essentially um, you just add the two bits together to get this. Now I'm going to discuss a, a specific example in this presentation. Okay. We're asked to solve the following problem. This wave equation subject to this initial position and this initial velocity. So let's just compare this with this more general form. So here h would be x. Now h is just a function of one variable in this case, okay, but it could be a function of two. Phi would be x cubed, and psi would be cosine x. Okay, so essentially all we have to do is for this h, this phi, and this psi, evaluate this uh, uh, expression. Now um, c is, is 1 in this case. Okay, so the, the coefficient of u sub xx is 1, c is positive, c squared is 1, so c is 1. Okay, so we're just going to essentially write this out with c equals 1, a given phi, a given psi, a given h, and then we're going to perform the integrals and uh, compute the solution. Okay, so, so there's, a, there's a double integral in this expression. There's a single integral and just this uh, term here. Alright, so it's going to be half phi evaluated at x plus ct, so c is 1 in this case, so it's going to be x plus t cubed plus phi evaluated at x minus ct, in our case x minus t, all cubed. So we replace x with x plus t in brackets, replace x with x minus t, all in brackets. Now C is 1, so we get this, and phi is cosine x. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, I'm integrating, the, the dummy variable in this one's s. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is work out, or oh, write down this double integral. Now, I'll talk a little bit about the region of integration at the end of the video. Okay. Okay, so for this term, we're going to have the following. Now, h is just a function of x here. The dummy variable is going to be y for the 
inside integral and s for the outside integral. Now, h is just a function of one variable, so we don't have to worry about the s inside here. So we'll just replace x with y. Okay, so we've set everything, everything up. Let's see if we can actually evaluate it now. Okay, well, it's not difficult to evaluate this integral. And remember, a, a good first option with double integrals is to perform the inside integral first, if you can, and then move on to the outside integral. Okay? So, let's try to simplify and see where it takes us. Okay, so let's integrate cosine s with respect to s, so cos will go to sine. Okay, and now this integral here. So if I integrate y with respect to y, I'll get a half y squared. Okay, so if I now plug in s equals x plus t, s equals x minus t, and these things in for y, I should get the following. Okay. And now just this one here. Oh, oh, I've left off the half. Okay, so I've left off the half from there, so that goes there. And that goes there. Okay, sorry about that. And now I'm going to have something like this. Okay, so... Okay, so my last um, integral to do is this one here, and then uh, I'll do a little bit of cleaning up and, and I should have my solution. Okay, so. Okay, so now with these integrals, you can see it's just a linear expression inside the brackets here. So essentially the, the integral is, is easy to perform without expanding it. This will become 3, and I'm integrating with respect to s, so um, a minus sign will come out the front. Okay. So... Oh, and I have to divide by the, the, the new power, of course. So I'll get something a little bit like this. Okay, so that'll go to a 3, divide by the 3, and bring a, a minus 1 out the front. Okay. Now, same with this one. Um, with this one, I'm going to... Uh, there'll be a plus inside there, so a, a, plus will, a plus will come to the front, divide by the new power, so I'll get something like this. Okay, now you, you could expand those, but uh, I'm not going to do that. Okay. So let's see how we can simplify now.
Okay, so let's take those out the front. We'll have minus 1 on 12. All right, so in s equals t, that's going to disappear and that's going to disappear. So I get x cubed. Uh, x cubed plus x cubed. So I'll get um, the following. And when s equals 0, well that'll disappear and that'll disappear. So I'll get x plus t all, all cubed and x minus t all cubed. Okay. All right. So now you'll see there's an x plus t cubed there, an x plus t cubed there, an x minus t cubed there, and an x minus t cubed there. So we can um, team them up, and this will th this will simplify. So if you team those um, cubes up, you should get something like the following. Okay, oh, let me insert that bracket. Okay, so of course you could, if you wanted to expand this and try to um, simplify the x cubes, but that's the form that I'm going to leave it in. Okay, all right, well, that's the answer, and you can verify that this really does satisfy the PDE the initial position and the initial velocity just by you know, substituting, differentiating, substituting, etc. Okay, now I said I'd talk a little bit more about this, the, the region of integration here. Okay, it turns out that it's a triangular region. And let me just, just um, sort of uh, show you what, what's going on with this particular example. Okay, so up here, what's, what's this region of integration here? Well, let me just do a quick sketch. Now we are integrating here in the um, the y s plane, okay? And y is between this line and this line, and s is between this and this, okay? So. Think of this as the line y equals this. Okay, and think think of this as the line y equals the top limit of integration. Okay, now the height here is t. Okay, so s is between 0 and t, so sort of moving up and down like that. And y, which goes from side to side, is between is, is to the right of this curve or this line and to the left of this line. Okay, so that region is this shaded triangle region. Okay, and, and it's going to intersect the axes, for example, when s equals 0, so this will be, say, uh, x plus t comma zero, this point here, and this will be x minus t comma zero. Okay, so that is the triangle that we're integrating over in this particular example. Okay, now you could clean this up a bit more. I'm not going to do that. Um, if you want to, you can. Now, um, as you can see, for this kind of problem, you need to be confident with double integrals. I've chosen a very, very simple right hand side, this could be a function of two variables, so you need to be aware of how to um, uh, perform double integrals. I hope you found this video useful. I hope you can join me for more presentations in the future.